Hi, I'm George Pearson, and this is my weekend blog post. Now, since my last five videos actually were about Photoshop Elements 19, I thought I would drop that for a while and talk about some other interesting tools you'll find online. Now, if you like this video, make sure you click that like button, and of course, always share with your friends. Just click that share button down below there and share on social media. If you haven't already done so, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. And if you want to really learn how to use these different programs that I talk about here on YouTube, take a look at my complete training courses and you'll find a link right down there in the description. Okay, let's roll the credits and get to this blog post. We'll start off here with a look at one of the sites that I use to find pictures to use in my YouTube videos. I've already talked about Pixabay previously. It's one of my main sources. This is another one of my main sources here. It's called Morgue File. Now this is free images down here just like the Pixabay site is and they're free for commercial use so it's a great site. The thing I like about this site is that it has some nice images but they still need a bit of work. That's one thing that I always look for for my YouTube videos. I want things that aren't perfect that can be improved upon or made into something better. I'm not looking for perfect images. We'll talk about a good site for better images in just a moment here. But this is a good site just for some basic free imagery. Now if you scroll down, you get some popular categories like right now Autumn Leaves is popular as you can see. There's a lot of great imagery in here. Now to search for your images instead of just kind of browsing this way, right here it says search photos and that actually is the search box right there. Just click in there and type in your search. Let's just do a search here for Halloween. There we go. And they have some suggestions. Halloween decorations, Halloween couples. We'll just go for straight Halloween. Hit the enter or return key. And there you go. Now they have three basic categories here. All photos, link images, and you can also request an image if you want to. Now on the left hand side, you'll see the morgue file images at the top. And then down below you can also search these different paid sites. Now I'll use these paid sites for my own work, but I don't use these of course for YouTube. I want to keep everything free on YouTube. So great source here for some marvelous imagery. Okay, in the right hand side here, simply scroll down to see all the different images that they have gathered in here. Now it'll go so far that it fills in as you can see there. And it's kind of an endless scroll. You just keep on scrolling, it will then just give you more and more imagery. There you are. Now normally when you click on one of these pictures, like the strange eyeball creature right here, it opens it up in a pop-up window. You can then download that right there. But if you need to have a link, which is what I do, I put my links of course on my support pages. If you need a link up here, there's a different way to do this. Let's close that one down. So you can find that picture again here. It always takes you just a little bit off from where you were, reason for that I don't really know. There it is. If you want to have an actual link to this one, just right click on the image instead and you can open it in a new window or view a JPEG. And these are all JPEG images. So open in a new window. There we go. This time up here, I have the actual link address right to this one image. So I could then put that on my support page or you can easily get back to this individual image this way just by copying that link. Same thing over here, you can download this, you put it into a favorites list, comment on it and so forth. At the bottom down here they have their license, terms and service down there. Now refund policy, this is for other services that are paid services. You don't have to be worrying about refund policy if you're only using their free imagery. And again, the free imagery on this site is free for any use, commercial or not. Okay, so that's the morgue file, free. It's a great site again, and I use this one quite a bit in a lot of my training. Another site that I also like right over here is Pexels and it's Pexels.com. Of course I'll have these links on the support page for this blog post. You can get those links right there. You need to write this stuff down at the moment. So here's the Pexels. Again if we scroll down you'll see that this is one of those continuous scrolls. It'll just keep on scrolling forever. Personally I prefer paged layout as opposed to continuous scroll layout. It's kind of easier to go back and forth that way. But there it is. Now you can search here. There's your little search box right in there. Just click in a search and then you can go ahead and 
search for any category that you want. They also have some basic categories down here, business, Apple, clouds, kitchen, idea, sad, and so forth, and some more basic categories, popular searches right there. Just scroll down and grab your popular search. This site also, just like the More File, is free for personal or commercial use. You know, whatever you want, really easy. They have a license there. There it is. Real basic license. You know, whatever you want, right there. It's nice to give credit to photographers or pixels. They appreciate that, but you don't have to. So it's a, a free site in that sense as well. Now, what I like about pixels is that the images here tend to be better pictures. Morg file and Pixabay. There are some good pictures and some not so good pictures, which for my YouTube videos works out well because there are things that I can then fix and show you how to fix that stuff. But if you're looking for good pictures, good quality pictures that you can put into projects, this is a good source. There's some really nice professional level images in here. And again, just a wide variety. People tend to put up their good stuff on Pexels. They put up everything they've got on Morg File or over on Pixabay, but on Pexels, you'll see some good pictures in here. So if you're looking for some good imagery, this is a nice place to go. Something else that's nice about Pexels, if you're using Photoshop, this doesn't work for Photoshop Elements, but this does work for Photoshop. If we go over here to the right, little triple dot right there, come down here and they have apps and a Photoshop plugin. So they have an app you can search this stuff on iOS or Android. There's an extension for Chrome. And down here, Mac and Windows app, you can search on your desktop. Microsoft Office add-in down below here, a WordPress plugin. So lots of great apps. And for us right here, Photoshop plugin. Right there, you can actually get a plugin. This will then show up in Photoshop and you can do your searching right inside of Photoshop and take it right from there, right into your project without ever having to go anyplace else. It's all done right inside of Photoshop. Real convenient. So if you're using Photoshop, this is a nice one to have. It works very much like the Pixabay plugin that I talked about in a previous video. Same basic idea. You have just a, a little pop-up panel over there and you can do your search right inside of Photoshop. So both of these sites I highly recommend for looking for basic imagery. Again, the morgue file, the stuff is not necessarily quite as professional. For me, that's better. I can use parts of these or fix these for what I like. This is a better site. But if you need a more professional finished image, good for backgrounds possibly, things like that, then the Pexel site is a great way to go. Let's go back here to their homepage. There we are. And one more interesting site. Let's click right over here. There we go. It's called wordclouds.com. Make sure you put that S in there. Again, I'll have this link on my support page to make it easy. If you do Word Cloud, that's a different company. You don't want that one. You want wordclouds.com right there. And what this is, is it takes a list of words and puts them into a cloud shape like this. Now here's our little words here. It's kind of popped up like that. Kind of hard to see all of them, but that shows up. That shows up well. So this is set up with their default setting. They'll automatically do one of these random fake word things for you. Let me show you how this tool works. Starting off at the left-hand side, we have File over here. This is where you can paste in your text. I'll show you that in just a bit. You can also open a text file or a URL that has text on it. Microsoft Office document, PDF document. And you can save out as a PNG, PNG with image map, JPEG, PDF, SVG, or share online. So you have lots and lots and lots of options in here to go ahead and do the even, even save, open, or print your word cloud in there. Now, next to that, we have size. You can choose the size you're working at. The default is 1024 by 768. Then you have word list in here. There's the word list that they're using on this one. This is words grabbed from lauramanipsum.com in there. And just a bunch of these kind of fake words. Notice the numbers on the left-hand side. of This is the number count how many times this word shows up in that text. And the word count over here, the higher the word count, the larger the word shows up on the page. The smaller the word count, the fewer or the smaller the word shows up. So it also is showing you an actual word cloud, showing you the frequency of the usage of the word based upon how many times it's in the bit of text selection. Let's just close that down. So if I scroll down a bit here, Lorem is used the most, and then Ipsum comes in right next to that. And the rest of these have less and less numbers or a less or lower frequency 
in the selection bit of text. Okay, up here we have then gap size. There's zero, there's two. Larger gap size gives you bigger gaps here within the words, as you can see here. I'm going to close that wizard thing down. That's just right over there. So you're going to adjust your gap size. The next button here allows you to change the direction of the words. Let's just do horizontal. There you go. Let's do a vertical. There it is. Other direction on that. Here's our horizontal and vertical mix. So you can be very creative on the layout of your words. Here's diagonal crossing. There we go. Downhill and uphill. That's actually kind of nice. That fits in that shape well. So you can choose all kinds of these different directions. Let's go back here to our randomizer. There it is. Next to that you can invert this. So the words are outside your shape or inside your shape. You can change the shape. Anything you want. I had that set for a heart. It's just easy to see what that is when we first lay this thing out. Real basic ones up here. Now these are very useful. You want to use this word count bit in a different piece of artwork. You know, I could use the heart if I was doing a Valentine's Day card, for instance, put in a whole lot of Valentine style words in there or, you know, a sonnet from Shakespeare or something and do it that way. Put it in a heart shape and then use that in a Valentine's Day card or all kinds of other shapes in here as well. Now, the larger the shape is, the more space, the more easily it is to see the words. The smaller, the more difficult it is to see the words. Let's do one here for Halloween. Here's a bat shape. There you go. There's your bat shape in there. So all kinds of different shapes. And also just a basic square, rectangle, diamond shape, circle, and ellipse. Very useful for working into different kinds of artwork. Okay, let's just close that down. Well, something else about this, notice we have shapes up here. These are the ones that I like using are these shapes. But they also have letters. You can put the text inside of letters. They have Colorful stuff, put it inside of colorful stuff. Here's a colorful rainbow square right there. Here's a colorful spinning wheel kind of a thing. So you can actually make some real nice finished artwork in here as well. You can also upload a shape if you want to in this. Go back here to our basic shapes. And I'll just go to the square this time. You can use this as a mask if you want. Different colored themes. I'm using this one right there at the moment. So it's a white background with different shades of blue. Here's a dark gray background with different colored text in there. And here's a white background again with different colored text. So all these different themes, kind of assorted blues right there and a dark background again. So you can choose these. Now, if you want to use this as a basis for other artwork, what you'd really want would be black text on a white background. So they have one here. It's a white background and kind of a medium gray. I'd start off right there. Let's just change this direction again. Let's set this for the randomizer. There we are. So I set it up like this using that gray on white theme. That gives me the white background that I want and a single color in here. Then go to colors. It's your next option. And down here, here are the cloud colors. Just click on this box right there. That's the one that's being used. And you have black and white down here. Click on black and then apply. And you now have black text on a white background, which makes it real easy to use in artwork. You can also change your font. You have Arial, Arial Black, which I use quite a bit. I just like how thick that one is. But lots of options in here. Scroll down, as you can see, there's just a whole lot of fonts. You can even choose anything from the Google font list, which is absolutely huge. So lots and lots of font options as well. So you can get just exactly the right typeface. Now the wizard just kind of walks you through these steps. We won't even bother with that. The slider control here increases the size or decreases the size of your lettering. There you go. So you have that as an option as well. Let's now see what happens if we import some text. I'll go up here to File, click on Paste, Type Text. So we paste your text in here. Now I have some text over here. I just put in just a bunch of characters from the Alice in Wonderland books. 
Notice I have Alice up here five times. That's because the more times the word is in your set of text, the larger the word is going to be in the word cloud. So if you want to control how large the text is or how much is being shown, then it adjusts or count how many times it's in your list, and that controls the size. I want Alice to be the largest, so I have Alice the most times in here. Okay, I'm just going to select this list. And you can use a list like this, or you can just use a paragraph or two of text. Either way, let's right click and copy. Go over here, right click and paste. There's my text. Let's apply this. And there we go. Alice is the largest word, of course, because I had that the most times in that list. So there you go. Great site, wordclouds.com, and it allows you to do these great word clouds. Last thing I want to do, of course, is to save this thing out. Save it as whatever file format you want, right in here. Also click on Save right there. Give it a file name. You can then save this and then come back to it later on if you want to. We'll just save this out as a JPEG. So come down here to Save as JPEG. Word Cloud, that's fine. Choose OK. And this brings up a standard Save As dialog box. I have mine going into my Text Projects folder. I'm sure you've seen a lot of these things already. Choose Save. And now this is ready to use in a text project. So there you go. A few things I think are interesting. The morgfile.com, pixels right here, and this wordclouds.com. And again, I have links for these in the support page for this video blog. Don't forget to share this out through social media. Just click on that share button right down below there. And I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.